the stickiest of the icky. You want to smoke with the old boy, Rick James? So I am no stranger to weed, not saying that I ever smoked it, but I grew up in New York City. Ask anyone from New York City that grew up in the 80s and they'll tell you they've come across a funky, earthy smell ever so often, around dark corners and alleyways. And when you smelled it, you know danger is not far behind. At least that's what I was taught. And that was back then. Today, most of the USA they're okay with weed. It's the same here today in Thailand where I live. In Thailand, cannabis was decriminalized back in mid-2022. But not everyone is willing to jump into the pool and fully invest their hard-earned money into the cannabis business just yet. I'll explain later why. Though as soon as cannabis was legalized, many cannabis dispensaries popped up overnight. Where customers can buy different flavors of cannabis like an ice cream store, and even smoke it on site in a comfortable space. Like this cannabis dispensary I'm visiting called Space Herbs in Hoi Kwang, Bangkok. I don't smoke the stuff, but just by looking at the creative names and descriptions, one might be tempted. Space Herbs and dozens of cannabis dispensaries all around the city of Bangkok and other major cities in Thailand are all part of the government's plan to attract even more foreign visitors looking to get high. To the point that provincial Thai tourism offices are providing a guide called 10 Things Tourists Need to Know About Cannabis in Thailand. And hundreds and hundreds of Thai farmers have started growing cannabis as a cash crop. It's the same thing with my in-laws. Here I am at their farm and they don't have a lot of cannabis at the moment, but I know these guys can grow anything. The next time I come back, I'm pretty sure this farm is going to be completely full of cannabis. So today, you're going to find small amounts of cannabis used in cosmetics, health supplements, and of course food. So when it comes to food, cannabis has had a really long history in Thailand. For a long period of time before cannabis became illegal, it was a common flavor enhancer. To be honest, that's the first time I ever heard of that. Though I can't see today every mom and pop Thai restaurant and hawker stand replacing MSG with cannabis because cannabis is still very expensive. Which is the main reason why they'll stick to using cheap and plentiful powdered MSG as well as pork and chicken seasoning powder. For today's cooking demonstration, I will only be using the leaves from the male plant which contains trace amounts of THC because I do not need to get high to do stupid shit. I can do it all by myself alone. The highest concentration of THC is found in cannabis buds, which is exactly what you find sold in cannabis dispensaries. The female plant here, you can see here, these are the buds. And just sitting next to it, I'm telling you, the smell is really, really strong and it's actually giving me a little bit of a headache. However, Thai lawmakers are already talking about criminalizing cannabis again. So there is a slight chance that maybe next month or the next two months, uh, cannabis is going to be illegal again, which is why it's a good time for me right now to show you uh, what, is, what it is like to use cannabis as an ingredient. So I better start cooking and chop chop. So I'm glad it's legal at the moment, so I won't get into any trouble. I mean, a wholesome middle-aged guy like me with cooking skills, I will easily end up as a prize bitch that gets passed around in an overcrowded Thai prison. All right, so I have all my ingredients prepared here already. Here I've got about 200 grams of chicken. The chicken I've chopped up into just small little bite-sized chunks. You can use chicken breast if you want, but you know, of course, chicken thighs are tastier. And I have a handful of grapao leaves, Thai holy basil. Some people have told me that finding Thai holy basil is very difficult. If that's the case, try Italian basil. Personally for me, it's not 100% the same, but it's close enough. And here are eight leaves of cannabis. And as I mentioned before, I've never handled this ingredient before. So I'm just gonna give it a taste now, uh, raw. There's really not much taste to it. If anything, it tastes like a really, really light uh, mint. So it doesn't have that strong earthy uh, 
you know, smell uh, or taste that you associate with uh, the female buds. So yeah, there really isn't too much of a, a taste to it. Let's cook it and see what it tastes like. Actually, my, my tongue's starting to feel a little bit numb, but maybe it's just all in my brain. Okay, and then next up, of course, you need a lot of garlic and a lot of chili. The funny thing is that you can get a, a high from eating too much uh, spicy foods, especially chilies. So, you know, it'll be an interesting uh, combination, right? So to make this, you do need a lot of Thai garlic. Now, I say Thai garlic because Thai garlic is much smaller than a larger Western garlic. But if you want to make this a authentic uh, Thai holy basil dish, you need Thai garlic. That's just my opinion. But if you can't find any Thai garlic, uh, use the Western garlics, okay? Better than nothing, right? I'm using Thai chilies. These are rather quite spicy, but if you can't handle the heat, you can use slightly larger chilies uh, like these, which will just put a little bit of heat, uh, just enough to, you know, kick you in the pants, uh, but it's not gonna kill you. I like to use a mortar and pestle to grind and break down my chilies and garlic. If you don't have one, you can use a blender. So you just want to grind these down until it looks like a chunky salsa. All right, next up is of course the sauce component. It's a really tasty sauce uh, for Krapao. It is one tablespoon of oyster sauce, one tablespoon of light soy sauce, one teaspoon of dark soy sauce, one teaspoon of fish sauce, one teaspoon of sugar, and two tablespoons of water. So the water is just gonna help create a little bit of a, a, a gravy. Now for me, there are two styles of pad uh, One is the dry style and two is the wet style. Personally, I prefer the dry style, but I do know plenty of people who do like a little bit of gravy in their pad If that's you, then you wanna add a little bit more water or you wanna add some chicken stock. Just remember when you add more liquids, you wanna put in a little bit more of the sauce just to make up uh, for the extra liquids. Now, usually when you eat uh, pakra pao, right, there's usually uh, a fried egg on top. Uh, but this time, I'm gonna make a Thai omelet. But I'm not just gonna make any Thai omelet. Because I've got some extra cannabis on my hands, I'm gonna use the leaves and add it into the omelet and see how it tastes. So in this omelet, I have three large eggs. Now, the trick to making a really tasty, authentic Thai omelet is that you have to really mix up the eggs. You really have to beat it meaning you can't really see any of the eight uh, whites uh, floating around. One tablespoon of oyster sauce. Now I'm gonna add 10 whole cannabis leaves to my Thai omelet. I'm gonna chop it up into little bits. The reason why I'm adding a lot of cannabis leaves to this dish is because I have a very strong suspicion that Thai holy basil is really gonna cover up the taste of cannabis. So by adding a lot of cannabis leaves into the Thai omelet, I'm really gonna maximize the flavors and hopefully it'll punch me in the face. And just a couple of small shallots. After combining all of these ingredients, just mix it up for about another 10 seconds. Okay, now that we got all the ingredients down, let's start cooking. Uh, let's start off by cooking the Thai omelet. Now, there are various styles of Thai omelet. One is the really greasy one where, where a lot of oil is used and one has less oil. And that's one that I'm gonna make uh, now because you know it's New Year's and uh, I wanna eat a little bit healthy. Don't worry about it. Halfway through the year, I'm gonna start eating crappy again. So, so there you go. So even though there's less oil, there's still a lot of oil in a Thai omelet. Uh, that's just the way it is. That's just the way how they make it. So I'm gonna cover the whole bottom of this pan and when I hear the oil start making this little popping sound, it's time to add the eggs. Just give it one final mix and drop in the eggs. So what we're looking for is the eggs to set on the bottom. So normally for Thai omelets, uh, this kind of a uh, dish is mainly for, for kids. Uh, so parents would put like uh, some minced pork uh, or chicken, uh, but definitely no cannabis. A Thai omelet is a little bit, just a little bit overdone. All right, I think we're almost there. Yeah, there it is. Got a little nice 
brownish color. So time to flip this. There it goes. And now we just brown the other side for about 10 seconds should be enough. You definitely don't want to overcook this because eggs can get overcooked and they'll taste rubbery. Just gonna fold it over and just try and drain as much of the excess oil out as I possibly can. All right, just like that. All right, and now on to the cannabis Thai holy basil with chicken. I'm gonna pop my wok on to medium high heat. So this is a stir fry, so it's very quick uh, cooking. Wok starts to smoke. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of oil. And I gotta be quick here because I don't wanna burn my garlic and my chilies. The first time that I made pepper pow, that's the first mistake that I made. I, I wasn't mindful and I always burn my garlic, which turns it bitter. Then we throw in our chicken. So to prevent your garlic from burning too quickly, you want to throw in the chicken as soon you don't want to wait too long to throw in your chicken because the chicken is going to help decrease the temperature of the hot wok. And another way to prevent the garlic from burning is to keep stirring. All right. And when the chicken is almost done, you throw in the sauce. And then we throw in the holy basil and the cannabis right there. the chili <laughs> as well as that extra chili that I had put it all in give it a stir for about five seconds and then turn the heat off you don't want to cook the Thai holy basil uh, too long because if you do it uh, then it might come out a little bit bitter so so it is best to let the residual heat from the ingredients cook down your Thai holy basil and as well as the cannabis. All right, time to give this a taste. Go to the chicken and the cannabis leaf and some krapow right there. Mm. Mm. Tastes awesome. But the thing is that I think the krapao, the Thai holy basil, actually overpowers the taste of the cannabis leaf. So I'm gonna try the Thai omelet with the uh, cannabis leaves inside. So this, I, I may be able to taste more of it, but we'll see because there's nothing else in there, right? So, yeah. I mean, it tastes good, but can't really taste nothing. Nonetheless, it was really fun to try at least once in my lifetime. Like I mentioned earlier, the Thai government wants to backtrack and make cannabis illegal again. Which makes you think, wouldn't that piss off the people that invested money into the cannabis industry? All those hardworking farmers looking at cannabis as a new cash crop? Anyways, you know what I always say, I do make deliveries, but maybe not this time. Unless you pay me with lots and lots of bitcoins and camels. I'll see you all next time.